Hi there. Um, as an introduction to the texturing video I'm about to do, um, just gonna, I figure I might as well, uh, show you a sort of complete workflow of me modeling this this dumpster. Um, so right now I haven't actually prepared anything, so uh, I think it's gonna come out something like this, but uh, I may change my mind later on. Um, so I'm, I'm probably just gonna uh, start making it in 3ds Max and speed up the video and talk over that. Um, so I guess away I go. Okay, so uh, I think this is at five times speed. Um, as you can see, just starting with the box, a uh, fairly obvious point to start with. Trying to get the um, sort of scale and form right. Uh, I tend to do the, uh, a lot of my modeling, as you'll see, in uh, perspective. I don't use the other viewports too much. Um, it's just personal preference, really. Um, as you saw there, I was using the uh, local space transformation to help me move it in the right kind of direction. Uh, just mirroring the top here. There's nothing particularly sophisticated about the sort of the modeling process of this this object, but that's okay. If you're new to modeling, then it's kind of still interesting to see how someone goes about making something from start to finish. These side bits uh, again, starting from a box. What I did with these is I deleted them, the faces so that I just had three faces, and then I used the shell modifier to uh, sort of give them that thickness. I think I started off by using a lot of mirroring at the beginning of this modeling process, and then I sort of changed over to symmetry. Um, Either was fine, but it just seemed easier to stick with symmetry. Make it a little uh, support bits here. It's always good to give things like this thickness if you can. Uh, it looks a lot more believable. Sometimes it can be uh, nice to give them a sort of additional thickness. Um, don't go nuts with it, but quite often if you make things as thin as they are in real life, they uh, they just look a bit flimsy. Um, people don't seem to sort of notice them so much in a game, unless you sort of exaggerate certain features. Again, using instances of, I think I changed the instances out for symmetry in the end. What I did there was I, uh, I unwrapped, because I knew the uh, piece I was using was going to be used a lot, I unwrapped it early on so that I didn't have sort of any problems later down the line. So I'll, I'll quite often do that while I'm working, is I'll do unwraps of things that I intend to repeat. What I've done here is I've um, chamfered each of these corners and then I've um, made use of the edit normals to uh, stop the smoothing from going all the way around and just confining it to the uh, just the corners. You can see sort of differences there. What I found out here was that uh, symmetry doesn't seem, sorry, uh, mirroring doesn't seem to support uh, edit normals properly. Or was it symmetry? One of the two didn't seem to do it right, so I just switched out for the other one. I wasn't quite sure how to go about... Um, I, I knew that I wanted to add in some sort of uh, surface detail to the front, but I wasn't quite sure how I wanted that to look. In the end, I sort of settled for a lip at the top and the bottom. And later on, you'll see that I actually change out that lip at the bottom to go all the way around. Yeah, just making little uh, struts at the corners. They'll be nice and sort of rounded. They've got a smoothing group across it, so I end up making them a lot thinner than that in the end. Here we go. Extrude wasn't behaving as I expected it to, so I had to play around with it a little bit. So those lips like that are fairly cheap to do. <coughs> so uh, and they add a little bit of something if you're up close. That they, they give it some kind of depth. You can do that sort of thing in the normal map, and that can look okay too. But you know, when when you've got a box-like shape like this, um, it's very very cheap to do that. It's not very many triangles at all. Again, just kind of giving it a bit of layered depth by 
making the, the lids go a little bit further than the front. That just helps to make it a little bit more interesting rather than everything lining up perfectly. It sort of adds to the silhouette as well. If you were to look at it from the side, you'd sort of see the lids and they'd feel like sort of separate separate pieces, which of course they are. At this point I realized that this was a little bit too big, so I sort of attached them all together and deleted the other half. And that allowed me just to mess around with the scale and such. At this point I detached the front piece from the rest of them so that I could add in sort of cuts and things. Something you could do in the normal map, but uh, because it's just a simple face, you know, you're talking about the cost of so few triangles to do that. Quite often if I'm doing a um, sort of uh, like a rod with a bend in it or whatever, I'll actually start with a torus just to get the corner um, looking neat at 90 degrees and using this number of segments that I want to do. There are other ways to do it, but uh, I find torus is easy and it also unwraps neatly because um, of course it has the default sort of torus unwrap, so that's very easy to work with later. With this I was sort of checking to make sure that uh, this could actually be um, rolled over the front. It wouldn't make much sense if I placed it too far back and it wasn't possible to actually lift the bin lids up because it was in the way. You know. So making sure details like that. Um, switch to grey now just because I'm getting towards the sort of finished state of the object. So I wanted to see what it was kind of going to look like without being distracted by the colours. Um, quite often I'll actually do that earlier on but uh, I just didn't get around to it until recently. Just checking out this sort of, seeing what's missing. Wheels, of course, and got new wheels. I've forgotten the wheels, so I added those in. When I'm doing cylinders like wheels, I like to have a flat surface on the uh, ground. It tends to look a little bit more correct than having a sort of point just touching the ground. Here's some uh, really thin, almost like cards, but uh, I had uh, them facing one facing each way so that you could sort of see them from both sides. And uh, you may have noticed I deleted the uh, the faces in between. It just didn't seem really necessary. They're going to be so thin that nobody's going to notice if they're not thick. On the whole, it's nice to have some kind of thickness, but yeah. Sometimes it's not, not really worth it for something so, so thin and small as that. You'll notice there again I, I unwrapped it before I started duplicating it around and that just meant that everything's already over the top of each other in the exact same place as each other and it's already kind of already unwrapped that piece. So it just made sense to do that. You'll see me make a lot of use of uh, relax when I start working there. I also used there the... Um, scale tool which is new to I think 2011 introduced that or maybe 2012 and it just uh, scales all pieces to the same sort of texel density so that's a neat little feature. Placing these wheels around, position them at different uh, angles just for a bit of visual interest as though it had been pushed along and then someone had swung the end of it around so you've got the ones on the left are kind of facing in parallel with the bin and the ones on the right are kind of tangential My computer kind of went slow there. I was wondering whether it was the backup, and you can ignore that. <laughs> it's always good to back up your work. Okay, at this point, I start making a really ham fisted way of selecting uh, the front faces. It had been a while since I'd been using Max, uh, I'd been using Maya for a, for a while now. So I'd, I'd forgotten how to make good selections, which is embarrassing, but never mind. Um, so as you can see, I'm just unwrapping. I'd, I'd still got uh, most of these uh, pieces were separate objects, um, and that was that was fine for the time being while I was unwrapping it. So uh, I left that as it was. It's good to position uh, pieces which are close to one another, sort of next to each other. 
sometimes you'll see I, I leave a tiny little bit of padding. Um, there's usually a good reason for that. If uh, if I want them to have very different uh, appearances, so for example, I want to place a kind of a normal shape to one side and then the opposite normal to the other side. If they're too close together, then they'll kind of bleed through. So there needs to be enough padding between the two. And uh, if you want that nice hard edge, then to, to, and it to look very different, then uh, placing them separately will mean that you, if you put, put a dark tone in one side and a light tone on the other side, they'll just stay very separate. Whereas if they're too close together, you'll, they'll kind of bleed into each other, which you don't really want. The tools I use in, um, in unwrapping are typically uh, the quick play to map. I use that a lot. And of course the relax tool. That pretty much covers 80 to 90% of what I do in unwrapping. At this point I'm kind of scaling them to where I, I kind of want them to be and I'm, I'm fully aware that uh, that they're not the same textile density. I wanted the, uh, the front to have a slightly higher textile density so um, that was a larger piece. But to, to make sure that that was the case I, uh, I, I scaled them to match and then fixed it. Um, as you can see starting from that torus allowed the shape itself to be really easy to get right. It was at this point that I realized I hadn't actually saved my work, which is like 40 minutes in or something. Max has a helpful backup feature, so I'm not too worried about that. But it's still good to save your work. So I'm unwrapping each piece one by one and just moving them outside of the, um, the grid in the middle. Um, trying to get each element of itself to match up to sort of the scales and stuff that I'd expect from each of them. Um, remember earlier I mentioned that sometimes I don't like to place pieces next to each other, um, so here I'll now break off the side pieces. That'll just allow me to do something on the normal map that I want to do, um, to make them look slightly rounder, and slightly more believable, and less like a really hard, <coughs> hard edge. So I just give them a little bit of padding there, and then relaxing them. Same thing again here, I think I split them up. It's actually um, no expense to split them up if they're on different smoothing groups anyway. Uh, if they're on the same smoothing group, then yeah, it is a little bit more expensive to break up the islands, but um, I mean, it's negligible cost. Again, sort of placing them so that they make sense if, when I'm texturing them where they are. So, um, you know, you're, you're trying to uh, pack things in tightly, but sometimes, you know, it, it's just more helpful to uh, make something that makes sense. So don't go kind of nuts with how you pack stuff. Try and keep the stuff that's related all together and stuff. So here, the faces and the sides are all placed next to the sides to which they are attached, if that makes any sense. And just tightening them up because they didn't need to be so far apart. As you can see, when I'm done with a with a section, I just move it to. I try and uh, remember which sort of areas I've used, and try not to overlap them, just so that when uh, I start unwrapping these all together, or pa packing them together rather, uh, they're no in the way, not in the way of each other. Uh, Max did a weird bug right here where it wouldn't let me select stuff. It was being a bit funny about it. I think in the end I closed down Max, or maybe I did that later on. It was being awkward, anyways. Uh, just checking which pieces I've uh, not unwrapped yet. So they're all done. In a moment you'll see them. Oh, I was going to use a tool here. You'll notice me starting to group them, but um, it didn't work properly because they weren't all one object. So I just just attached them all. There wasn't there was, by that point. It's fine. It was fine to attach them all. So as you can see, they're all one object now. Um, and what I used there was uh, group selections, uh, and that just means that if I've got a so a bunch of stuff already packed neatly how I want it, such as say the wheels, and if they're, they're overlapping, then it means when I use uh, this sort of this new arrange elements tools, um, the scaling one and the packing one, they'll stay packed the way th th those little chunks will stay packed the way that I wanted them. I had real difficulty packing this light into a square. I don't know why it should have been easy, but I really struggled. So <laughs> you'll see me. Kind of keep at this for ages by this point. 
It's like, oh, it's kind of like a square, right? Let's go with that. And no, I wasn't happy with it. Still lots of wasted space. And then, yeah, it's looking good, but nope, not a square. And I didn't, I don't like stretching my textures just for the sake of filling the square, so I thought about if I could pack them differently. I also checked, you'll notice I put the checkerboard on the object itself, um, just to check the texture density again. And uh, it was pretty much where I wanted it, but a couple of pieces could have used a little bit more. Um, so, just trying to figure out a better way of packing these. Although the sort of the arrange elements stuff is really helpful as a starting point, it rarely gets a great result. Like that, you're just gonna, you know, be happy with, unless you've got lots of very small pieces, in which case usually it's fine. But uh, I didn't, so I had lots of medium to large size pieces that meant that I kind of had to do this all a little bit by hand. But yeah, I'll be, I'll be the first to admit that I, I kind of got a bit carried away with this. I could have just stopped here. This would have been fine, but no. I fiddled, and I fiddled. I think I, think I was pretty much done by that point. Nope. Oh, that's better, yep. That's got to be done. Yep, so I'm just rendering out the template so that I can uh, start to touch these. <clears throat> Tend to save them as PNG, but not a bit different. You'll notice I rendered, that, rendered out a wire one and a solids one. Um, I tend to use both of those when I'm, when I'm doing my texture. Okay, that's about it for the modeling. Um, join me in the next video for actually texturing the thing. See you then.